The teaching of community is key to the citizenship curriculum. Jamie Elliott, citizenship coordinator at Dane Court School in Derbyshire, won praise from Ofsted for his outstanding approach. We've come to see in detail how he teaches the concepts of community so effectively. It all starts with his year sevens stranded on a desert island. It was like new to me. I didn't know. I, I didn't know what citizenship was until um, that day. And from shops. Is it not going to be shop on an island? Oh no, no. <laughs> Communicating with our teams was so good because we were finding out facts of what we could do and sharing ideas. We've got to watch out for the shark or that. Watching and commenting on the lesson is Dr Hilary Kremin, Director of the Centre for Citizenship Studies in Education. Have a look at the board? What is it? In? It's a map. It's a map or a picture. It's an island, isn't it? There's different things on this island, different aspects on this island. At the beginning of the lesson, the main point was, was for them just to have something visual to look at, which immediately just gets them thinking. It gets them thinking about, well, what is it for? What are we doing today? What is this map about? And it's just to get them to actually think a little bit deeply rather than just having the title up there immediately. This map contains within it, or will contain within it, a community. What does that word mean, do you think? Community. It's like our whole area. Countries. Countries. What other communities then? James? Towns. Towns and cities are all communities. Now there's different ways how these communities work effectively together. Because they do work together, don't they? Otherwise it would be chaos, wouldn't it? The general theme of the lesson was what essentially makes an effective community. And to recognise these positives and to recognise some of the aspects that go towards making this positive community and the role that they have in making this. And the teamwork, the cooperation, the support, the suggestions. All this is part of being an effective community. And that through. So you... Jamie's plan for his lesson on the building of a successful community is available on the Teachers TV website. Could someone read me through that piece of information then? You are in a school party off in holiday with two teachers. On your way to your destination, your ship sinks and all the adults, including the crew and all teachers, are killed. You and five of your school friends survived the shipwreck and managed to swim to a desert island. This is now your community, where you are. And through this exercise, we'll find out some of the things you will need to do that makes an effective community. A lot of the communities that we present to children are ready-made by adults and they're only able to respond to them. But an activity such as uh, this one gives them a chance to think about what would we do if we were starting from scratch. List the things that you feel that you would have to do in the first few days. But the second task, you then need to decide which order you think those things need to be done in. Could find water, water. Yeah, water and find um, bits of twig and stuff to build a shelter. Where you can make a fire. Yeah. You have to keep warm. Very good. Some very good ideas. Now that I've have to be number four to find twigs in glass, so we can make fire. Would glass make fire? You could do shine sun onto a piece of leaf or paper or anything you can find and it'll it, and put some like twigs in that and it'd... Yeah, if you put twigs on there, it'd smoulder and then you'd blow it time. and it'd turn into a big flame. Normally, throughout the times when you've done this, they're thinking about shelter, they're thinking about food, but what they are doing, which is probably what they're perhaps not more aware of, is that they're actually talking and communicating together. They will share ideas, they will argue and give reasons for a point of view, which ultimately is what I'm wanting to do. I'm wanting you to explain now. Why, why, would you, why, why is shelter going to be up there? Why, why do we need shelter? Sam? Because you don't want, like, say, if it starts to storm, mm. and you don't want to get wet or... If, you, if you're under a tree, that guy like to keep to us. Oh, well, fantastic. You want, you want some shelter to keep you protected from the elements, don't you? One of the ways that I might extend this activity would be to rotate the sheet so that the pupils are commenting on each other's lists. 
then it would mean they would be prioritising somebody else's. And that's also a way of um, sort of sharing information as well and for them to, to find out about what another group's been thinking about. Look carefully at this map and mark on where you feel will be best to set up camp. Now they've got to negotiate. Now they've got to decide and prioritise which one is more advantageous than the other. So what they're actually doing, even though there are a couple of people not agreeing with what others, they have to try and reach a compromise. And compromise is a skill within an effective community. What you have to maybe weigh up are some of the advantages and disadvantages then, the don't volcano. you? So now you're sorting out and deciding which is... OK, yeah. so you're actually thinking now in terms of according to this picture. Too often in education we concentrate on the content of what we're teaching and not enough on the process. And here the real learning is actually about the process of developing a community, of creating ideas, negotiating, working together as a group. There's wild animals there which may, OK, they may be dangerous, but it only says wild, it doesn't say wild dangerous animals, which might be a supply. You don't want to kill them, you don't want to kill them, though, Well, no, there may be that. But, if you're really hungry, some very, very good points, very well explained. Good thinking. In that um, activity, the children were using moral, moral reasoning to, um, to really good effect. And there's one lad there who talks about animals and about the fact that they were there first and whether they should be killed for food or not. And that's the beauty of using a very big simulation activity such as this one where um, the young people can talk about things in groups and bring in their own ideas. Yeah, but we're close to the volcano. I don't mind, it won't go off. No. Ian, from this group, could you come and point where you decided as your group where you were going to be? No. OK. So you're going to be there, all right? Tanya, could you feed back for me, please, why you've decided to go there? Because we're near the sea, so we've got water, and that's where fish are, so we can catch fish. And we're well away from wild animals and stuff. OK. There is one small dilemma in that, because you did talk about water. I want you to think about that. Sea water has salt in it and it's very salty. Indeed. But river water, it, it, it can come fresh. It comes fresh water. You can't <coughs> drink salt water. It's a good strategy to structure feedback as carefully as you can so that there's two or three key points that they're feeding back. Sometimes when um, feedback's unstructured you can end up with sort of a nightmare scenario where it just drags on and on and um, people start to get bored, you start to get bored but you feel that you can't really draw it to an end because you're not being fair to everybody. It was Jamie's own idea to link this classic scenario to the citizenship curriculum. The planning and the organisation of what the outcome was going to be was quite tricky because it was quite complex issues that they were actually dealing with. Well, I would say in the initial stages it took me maybe an hour to plan that one lesson but now that lesson is planned. That lesson is planned now and can be used in subsequent years because I know it's an effective lesson. The next part of the lesson aims to get the pupils to consider what qualities might make a good leader. Be confident. What I want you to do is look through those cards of information about those different people. You decide who you think would make the best leader. Remember, give reasons for your choice. Philip, 15 years old, he has a bright personality and is popular with group. He's confident in himself. Yeah, but with Catherine, she's really clever and she has like, bright ideas. She yeah, so she's good at organising as well. And she's older. Yeah, so that one might be a good one. Let's have a vote. Who wants Catherine? <laughs> Who wants Philip? So could this group explain to me the person that you have chosen? We chose <coughs> Philip because... He's got a bright personality, he's popular with the group, he's very confident and he speaks clearly about things that concern him. How did you make that decision based on that information? We looked at all the other ones and Catherine's too shy. John tells you more about his family. Kevin doesn't find it easy to talk to other people okay. so it all leads down to Philip. So you, you actually come up with your leader as well as based on the qualities that he'd got but also based on the weaknesses that the others had, OK? Which is very detailed decision-making process and sorting, OK? That's excellent. But what they're actually telling me is that this is what a good person has. This is what a person in a respectful community has. This is what it is to be a respectful person. 
and ultimately the students will realise that they too have these qualities and they know that they have these qualities and will realise that they, just like this leader, have a central role to play in that community. In order to run the island smoothly, you need to have some rules. You need to write down five rules that you feel would be important and then think of reasons why you have chosen those particular rules. Everybody's got to collect at least uh, one little water. The second one, you've got to share the water. Listen to other people's opinions. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. What are we going to do about maybe some of the rules in terms of staying alive yeah, for yeah, like take, food and take, water take, and things like take that? Take it in terms of share fishing. food. Okay. Share yeah. food. So you may, you, may, you may come up with maybe share. another share. couple more. Share food. Okay. Excellent. Well done. It wasn't a rule that was set out for me. It was their own rules that they felt that would best support their own community. But they were aware of the rules. They were aware of what rules mean, the meaning of the rules, that it's there in terms of your own safety, that it's there to protect, that they're there to support, that they're there to keep you from harm. And again, that relates into their own community environment in terms of school rules and the wider community rules as well. No wandering off without telling anybody where you're going. <laughs> yeah, so you can, if you get lost, no one knows where you are. Don't try whistling a bit. Share. <laughs> or the main part of the plenary, was the brainstorm at the end of the lesson, which was just a simple mind map at the end. Question, exactly the same question as what was the title question for the lesson. It's what makes an effective community? Team. Teamwork. Anything else? Uh, to put gentle persuasion in. Gentle persuasion, very good. Where have you got that from? From this assembly. To use gentle persuasion. If you remember, it's actually our theme of the week anyway throughout the school assembly. So good link there. Well done. I was going to ask the question, how does this lesson then support what we do through the pastoral time or in terms of assemblies? But John actually brought it up beforehand where he talked about gentle persuasion. And that's been a theme throughout this week. It is important that students do recognise those links because, one, it makes those links actually real and it makes uh, the pastoral programme uh, important and relevant. And it also makes citizenship uh, relevant and important to those as well. These things that we are looking at here now, also relate to your school community and the community around you nationally and globally. We have leadership, strong teamwork, work together. What's our slogan on your sweatshirts? Achieving together. Achieving together. So the rules of your community that you set up on your desert island are exactly and very similar to the community rules that we have in our school community. So what did the pupils think of the lesson and what have they learnt? I think citizenship means respect to your friends and to the community. Because when we done that map, we all had to agree on where we were putting it and we all went with like our friends' opinion, so we were like communicating and we weren't like eating each other, so we were respecting one another. I enjoyed the lesson because we all worked as a group and we all sh we all shared each other's ideas and everything. I think it's good with citizenship because it shows how to cooperate and make you learn yeah. how to cooperate. You like you have to agree with each other, like so you have to vote for whose opinion, or you can like get both opinions together and make one a big opinion. Mm -hmm.